Hello, I'm Terrence Summers, owner of Social Breeze Sports. I'd like to introduce to you a new series, Jackets Tales. In this series, myself and Chris Randolph will navigate you through everything Springfield football. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe to the channel, and as always, go Jackets. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, it's Jacket Tales. It's the history of Springfield football. Yes, sir. 1911 until today. It's a lot of interesting stuff. First, I want to recognize Dr. Uh, Trauber, Dr. Lloyd Trauber, who was an eye doctor in Springfield. Back in the 90s, he done uh, late 80s, early 90s, he done a series on on Springfield football, the history. Each week he featured a team. Me being old, just into this, I, I saved it all and put it in scrapbooks and it wouldn't be possible if he done it. He hadn't saved all this and it's just amazing how he done all that. He He's the reason I, you know, when you hear all these things, it's unreal how he yeah. documented it, you know, Terrence, over the years. It's great that somebody at the time thought about doing that. It is. And uh, he done it because he had, he did, he's not even a Springfield graduate. I think he graduated from Cross Plains yeah. at a high school at the time. But, you know, most of his patients were from Springfield. And, and Springfield was known for football. Yeah. It was a football town. And there's also this year, last year, a book was released by Nancy Arnold and Ed Garrett on Coach Smith, and it's an excellent read. There's some information that I get from this, from that. It's, I recommend the book highly for anybody who's in the history on Springfield football. But uh, it starts before Coach Smith. We'll start the first team at, at Springfield was in 1911. The school at this time was probably known as a uh, People's Tucker School, Terrence, and uh, we only have one game documented, yep. and it's against Fog High Reserves, and unfortunately, we lost in a scoring fest, six to nothing. <laughs> but see, you get you can't say that Springfield High School first game was a loss because that's, that's People's Tucker School. You can't put that on our record, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well. We'll do that, but we we also counted some of them for wins. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll leave it whoever counted them. Anyway, and Fog High was is what is now Hume Fog High School. At one time, there was a Fog High and a Hume School, and it was across one another. The school is on Broadway across from Bridgestone Arena, you, yeah. and it's a beautiful building. It it's, is. It's still historic. stands that to yeah, the Gothic, it's building. Gothic style. But we played them. And that's the only game we had uh, there against Fog, uh, Fog High losing six to nothing in that ball game. Then we uh, go to uh, 1912, and we were 0 and 1, and we lost to our neighborhood Cedar Hill. Uh oh. <laughs> 28 to nothing. Springfield's never played Joe Burns in a football game, but they played Cedar Hill. Played Cedar Hill. And Bell School, we'll get to that too as it, as it gets on down further. And also uh, one other county school was played later on. But the record was 0-1, and uh, like I said, they played Cedar Hill in that ball game. In 1913, there were no uh, scores or games documented. In 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, somebody was taking a nap on report. Somebody, somebody decided just to enjoy the games. Yeah. Not, not doing yeah. any writing about it. In football at this time, you know, it's in its infancy. You know, heck, it was probably, there might not be nobody there. You know, they yeah. might, anything might happen. And then, but uh, in 1919, James F. Adelot was the coach. And it was a three and one season that year, and the Jackets uh, lost forty-seven to nothing against uh, Peabody Demonstration, which was a school that is part of Vanderbilt University now. Yeah. It was the high school version, but uh, Peabody was that. And what's unique is they play Peabody again the next week, and Springfield wins seven to nothing. <laughs> well, we must have had some key injuries yeah. in that one. Anyway. Uh, we're that makes us uh, two wins, and then the first documented game that I have in, in our records. I don't know how the people down in Montgomery County, Clarksville, have it documented, but in 1919, Springfield and Clarksville. 
played for the first time by my records. And uh, Springfield won, but there's no score uh, information on that. And then uh, they also played Lebanon, and they won 47 to nothing against Lebanon uh, back in 1919. And they, like I said, they lost that game, first game to Peabody demonstration, and then they went on a streak and finished three and one. Okay, in uh, 1920, uh, uh, Mr. Overcash is the new coach, Winston M. Overcash. He later became principal. In fact, he was a principal when they hired Coach Smith uh, to come to Springfield. But he had a football team that year that finished 6-3-1. and one. They defeated Clarksville 13-7. Columbia Military, 19 to 13. Murfreesboro Central, that's the first documented game against the Tigers in 19 to nothing back in 1920. And then they uh, lost to uh, Williams Prep, 20 to nothing. They actually lost to Murfreesboro, uh, 19 to nothing. Uh, Nashville Central was a win, uh, 12 to nothing. And then uh, they played uh, Orlando, <laughs> <laughs> and they finished in a 6-6 six, six tie with Orlando. I don't know where it was played, but it was a good game, apparently in a score fest there. Anyway, 1921, Mr. Overcash continued coaching, and he finished 6-2. and two. He had wins over Morton Elliott of Kentucky, Murfreesboro, Lebanon, and Clarksville, and he lost that season to Columbia Military, 13 to nothing. And Bell School of Adams defeated the Jackets, 12 to 7, which they probably weren't the Jackets at this time. They were still, uh, uh, hadn't had a nickname by this time. I think the Yellow Jacket name came when Coach Smith. Smith. Yeah. So I think I, he had something to do with, yeah. with the naming of the uh, team at that time. So when people took to school, no, no name. Just the people took a school and they had a team and or Springfield. At this time, yeah. it might be called Springfield because uh, 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 of the principal at that time, Mr. Overcash. Okay, All Springfield right. High School. Mm -hmm. SHS is still uh, playing football in 1922, and uh, they finished six and three. Not a lot on that, and uh, some some things about this. It was the first time that the Jackets played Portland. And also the first time that they played NBA, which is, of course, a, a longtime rival. In, 2020, in 1923, uh, Mr. Overcash was still coaching, and the score of the record was 2-2. Two and two. That's what's documented. There might have been some other games, but that's all that we have. And uh, they won over Clarksville 12 to nothing. That's uh, a win, and they also – defeated Columbia Military, and they lost to Peabody. And I don't have the other loss on that one. In 1924, William Overcash was still uh, the coach, and the Jackets finished 3-2. and two. They defeated Simpson County, Kentucky, 7 to nothing, and they beat Dixon, 62-3. to three. Trousdale County, 13-7, to seven, and they lost to... Peabody, and they also lost to Murfreesboro Central in 1924. See, right now, I know people are probably listening and saying, you know, it's the early times. We're in the 20s. Did the teens, did the 20s. And in my personal opinion, this 20s right now kind of laying the foundation for a lot of future rivalries and a lot of future when we get down the line to the 70s and 80s. A lot of connections between Springfield and all these schools, along with coaching, players, family members, and absolutely, you're exactly right. And you know, football was just starting at that time. And then, yep. you know, uh, these games. I don't think I know. Uh, just looking as we go further, these games didn't even have bleachers. I don't think at the game they probably didn't even have uh, charge admission at this time. But later on, of course, you're going to hear some of the crowds. It's yeah. unreal. 
that that were at the game. So we're still in 1925. Yeah, 1925. Things are starting to get a little bit more, and the Boy Smith <laughs> era is not too far. Yeah. So, and that's when everything goes. So, in 1925, uh, Fred Kahn was the coach, and the Jackets had a good good record of six one and one. They had one tie. The only loss was to Hopkins Hopkinsville, Kentucky, thirteen to nothing. Uh, and the tie was to Peabody. They had wins over Simpson County, Kentucky, Clarksville, Portland, Trousdale, Lebanon, and also the Wallace University School of Nashville, uh, which was uh, probably later on University School of, of Nashville, which is right adjacent to Vanderbilt over there in Nashville. In 1926, uh, Clifton Thornberry in his first season, uh, the Jackets were three, three, and two, three wins against uh, Simpson County, Kentucky, Elkton, and the first meeting between Springfield and Gallatin. Uh oh, <laughs> don't know, <laughs> don't know if they were the Green Wave, but of course this is a long time rivalry, and it got kind of interesting through the years. Yes, it's very well, good. Two good football towns, yeah. you know, that have respect for one another. And before they were Gallatin High School. Uh, first opened in 1914 as Trousdale Allen School, and then in 1915 changed to Central High School. Before in 1932, finally becoming the Gallatin Green Wave. Wow, that's cool. Gallatin High School, man, this is history. This is my kind of history. <laughs> <laughs> Football history. All right, that's cool. And uh, you know, it's it's been a long rivalry and. I still love it. It's one of my favorite places to watch a football game is at Gallatin. It used to be, uh, I used to love our old games at Boy Smith, of course. Yeah. But you go watch a game at Gallatin, you're right on top of the action. I remember watching you play, Terrence. <laughs> I, you remember your kickoff? I do remember my kickoff. <laughs> I won't say anything about that. A lot of people remember their kickoff. That's, uh, <laughs> it has to be some Springfield history right there itself. First missed <laughs> kickoff in the opening game. <laughs> I don't know about that. It probably, you know, some of these when we were talking earlier, there's probably a few whiffs there. Though. Yeah. I know. Uh, I didn't Gal mean to bring that up, but it, <laughs> how was that? That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Galton is, is always a great place to play. And, you know, they kept that history of, you know, they, they renovated their stadium a few times and it looks nice. Oh, that's it completely uh, on the visitor side. They've redone it completely. Yeah. And they have moved the bleachers back from the sidelines, but, uh, it's it's my, still my favorite place to watch a game. It's Calvin you know? Shortfield. No, the Jackets actually hit there in week maybe week nine this year. Yeah, that's right. The Here. Jackets will be at Calvin Shortfield. Yeah. So the history is renewed, and we'll be back there for the first time since possibly 2016. Yeah. 20, something about that. It goes back a long way. I know the first time it was probably one of my second or – third games on the road that I ever attended when I was a little kid. Yep. My dad drove the bus, and we were actually, uh, I remember us parking back behind the the goalpost, uh, back yep. behind the school. That's when the school was actually in front of the field. I'm getting a little too deep into that, but we'll go <laughs> we, on. We'll get to that eventually, because if right, everybody yeah. knows, you know, 80, 81, Springfield Gallatin, that's peak time. We'll get that's to that eventually. That's probably uh, that those two games there are two of my favorite all time in yep. history. And uh it was quite an interesting ball game up there in eighty one. We'll get to I it. I was actually uh, <laughs> close to the action that night and uh, watched one of my best friends kick the extra point that night for the win. We'll That's get into thing. that in about eighty years later. Yeah, <laughs> sixty 80, more years probably. Sixty five years from yeah, now. We're <laughs> way, so you can't you can't uh, jump up to that right now. And we hope that everybody tunes in and uh, continue to listen to as we go out through the decades of the great historic Springfield football program. That's exactly right, and it's a lot of history. Just just bear with us here, and we'll get through it. And uh, in 1927, Clifton Thornberry is still coaching, and uh, the record was 1-4-1. One, and one. The one, lone win was against uh, uh, somebody that you like to beat, Clarksville, yes, 20 to nothing. And, of course, that's the all-time oldest rivalry of the Jackets is Clarksville and Springfield. The four losses in 1927 was to Simpson County, Kentucky, and they also lost to Nashville Central, 
Murfreesboro, and Peabody. And they tied Elkton, Kentucky, uh, across the state line. Okay, in 1927, like I said, 1-4-1. and one. In 1928, a new era began in Springfield. Boy Smith comes to Springfield.